What's going on guys, Dr. Brute 7 signing in back with another tutorial video. This is going to be another custom firmware tutorial video. I'll be showing you guys how to install the newly Batocera custom firmware on your RG35XXH Plus and the 2024 version of the RG35XX. So what is newly? It's basically is a fork of Batocera whose main goal is to maintain compatibility for the lower power devices such as these Anbernic devices or devices that ne doesn't necessarily benefit from some features that have an impact on device performance. These devices have limited hardware capabilities and the Batocera custom firmware takes a whole lot of memory usage which compromises the overall performance, the emulation experience. That's basically what I said on my Batocera installation and demonstration tutorial video. The links in the description. A couple of you guys are not happy. Totally fine. You have your own opinions. I have mine. Me as a content creator, I need to keep you guys informed what exactly is going on when it comes to the user experience so that you guys can make an informed decision. I'm not saying by any means that Batocera is a bad custom firmware. It's amazing. It's just not made for certain devices. That's all I have to say. A whole lot of tweakings that needs to be done. A whole lot of people don't like to do those. They want an out of the box experience. We can get it through the stock OS itself. Aesthetically, Batocera is a whole lot pleasing to look at as compared to the stock OS. But you know what? We're going to talk about that on a later video. So the very first thing is that we're going to format our memory card. So please make sure that you back up any contents or BIOS files or your saved games onto your PC or any other storage device. We're just going to remove the memory card, plug it into our system. Once our memory card gets detected, you're going to see that there's two partitions. So we're going to format this first. So let's do a basic format and head over to format. And we're just going to select FAT32. Go ahead and format it. All right, now that's done. Okay, next we are going to format the share partition. Now it's on XFAT format. It really doesn't matter because we're going to be combining these two partitions. In order to do that, we're going to head over to search bar and type in disk manager. So now you're going to see that under disk one, it says Batocera D and share. We're just going to delete the volume by right clicking on it. Done. And then we're also going to delete Batocera as well. So as you can see, it says unallocated volume 119 gigabytes. Right click on it again. New. Create simple volume. Do not do anything on this. Assign a drive letter. I'm going to stick with D. File system as XFAT. New volume. Finish. Done. It says XFAT. All right. Now we're done with the formatting process. Next visit the link in the description and you're going to scroll down until you come across the header that says installation package download. The very first one that says for RG35XX plus age 2024, you're just going to go ahead and download the image file and extract it with WinRAR extractor or 7-zip. You're going to get an image file. Next, you're going to use a disk image creator tool. I'm going to use Win32 Disk Imager and then I'm just going to browse for my extracted image file. Select my device and just write it. So we're just going to wait for the process to finish. There you go. It says write successful. So we have successfully flashed the image file. There you go. Okay. So we're going to be inserting our SD cards into our Anbernic devices. Make sure that you insert it into the first SD card slot, which says TF1 internal. Now we're just going to power on our devices. Okay. Let it initialize first. So on the first boot, it's going to create all the system files and also create a separate partition that we saw when we were formatting our memory card, the one that says share. Okay, so the process has been completed. So we're just gonna shut down the system and then just take out the memory card, insert it into our computers. Now here's the thing. Now we do not have the share partition. And if you're gonna face the same thing, there is a solution for that. We're just gonna head over to disk management two, type in disk manager. All right. So as you can see that we have a healthy primary partition, which is unallocated. You just right click on it and delete the volume. That's the only option that will be enabled. So just delete the volume and then just create a new volume. Just like how I've shown you guys during the format process. On the create new volume, select NTFS and name the drive as share. And that's it. 
a new partition will be created. Then take out the SD card and reinsert it into your Anvernic devices. Turn it on. It will take a little bit to initialize. It's just creating all the necessary files and folders into that created share partition. After that, you can just shut down your system and reinsert your SD card into your computer. And if you head into the share folder now, you see all these bunch of created folders. You just move all your ROM files into the specified folder, the saves and the BIOS files into the share partition. At the same time, if you head over into the ROMs folder, you're going to see all these specified platforms. You just have to transfer the specific ROMs into the specified folders. So this is a Sega Master System ROM, transfer it into our Master System folder. We have PlayStation Portable ROMs, we're going to be transferring those into our PSP folder. And then we have our Dreamcast ROMs into our Dreamcast folder. Sega Mega Drive ROMs or Sega Genesis ROMs, however you want to call it based on your region, into our Mega Drive folder. I'm going to talk about regarding PSP emulation, so just stick around. You can get 30 FPS cheats for the God of War Chains of Olympus. I already have them copied and pasted. As you can see, it's right over here. I copied them over from my stock firmware cheats folder. You can do the same. Okay, so reinsert your memory card into your SD card slot of your Anvernic devices, boot the system. And the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna reconfigure the controls because that's one of the issues with this custom firmware. In order to do that, we're gonna have to bring up the custom firmware's main menu, press the start, controller and Bluetooth settings, controller mapping, okay, press and hold. On this screen, we're gonna map the controls. So for South, East, North and West, they are referring to these buttons. So for South, we're gonna press on B, East, A, North, X, West, Y. For Start, it's Start, Select, D-pad up, down, left, right. For left shoulders, we're gonna use L1. Right shoulder, we're gonna use R1. Analog up, analog left. These are for both the left analog. Right analog up, right analog left, left trigger, L2. And for the right trigger, we're gonna press on R2. Left stick press, press on the left analog stick. The right stick, right analog stick. The hotkey, we're gonna press the function button. All right, and press on OK. Done. So we're done with the configuration of the controls. Now, with that thing out of the way, second thing is the sound settings. You have noticed that after installation, there is a front end music, which I don't like. You can just turn it off by heading into sound settings, front end music, you just shut it off. Now let's just check the copied ROMs and everything. Dreamcast ROMs, Mega Drive ROMs, everything is there. PlayStation Portable, but we need some cover pictures. How to do that? Connect to the internet. Head over to network settings, enable Wi-Fi, select your Wi-Fi device, press on B. There you go. Wi-Fi has been enabled. Pull up the custom firmware's main menu, head over to Scraper. Now select your preferred website under filters, games to scrape for all, and then just scrape now. I'm already scraping it. Let's just wait till it's done. So there you go. We have added the box arts. Okay, so let's test out some games and then we're gonna wrap this video up real quick. So we're gonna start with Nintendo. I haven't scraped some of the newly added games.
Now as you can see that the Dreamcast emulation is not quite good even on this custom firmware. I have tweaked around with the settings a little bit here and there through the RetroArch settings. However, there has to be some sort of settings because on the stock firmware or the modified stock firmware, out of the box Dreamcast emulation experience is quite awesome. I mean, you can check out my Dreamcast emulation testing video on this device. I am going to be linking that on the description and you can check it out for yourself. I mean, I was thinking maybe there would be some improvements in the Dreamcast emulation. There isn't. But in regards to the other emulation, the performance is pretty well. PlayStation Portable emulation, you can try out the settings that I have mentioned on my other tutorial video. For those who are looking for a complete emulation experience, I think it's better to stick to the modified stock for now. For those who are looking to experience MAME emulation, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance. Open Bore is like working pretty great. Sega Mega Drive, Sega Master System, they work pretty well. They work pretty awesome. master system if you want to pull up the retroarch menu press the function button here along with the B button it's going to bring up the retro or quick menu from the quick menu just a little bit of information you can activate the rewind feature one of my most personal favorite features activate the rewind feature and assign a button to activate the feature you can do that by heading into settings input hotkeys scroll down you're going to see assign a button combination for the rewind feature along with some other emulator specific feature it's working pretty well and this is basically how you activate the rewind feature on your retro arc so that's basically it with the Bato Serra fork newly custom firmware that's basically what I wanted to show you guys how to install it and a little bit of demonstration. I'm not going to be super or hyper critical about this. I already made my impressions video on the Bato Serra custom firmware on these kind of devices. You can check that out. If you have a different opinion, that's totally fine. I really don't mind. However, I've stated what I've stated and I'm going to stick to it until something else shows up, you know, when it comes to the performance or if it's going to be as easy to use as the stock firmware. This is basically it. This is what I wanted to show you guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found this video helpful, make sure to drop in a like and subscribe. And yeah, you can drop in and say hi during my live streams, which I do from time to time. I'm gonna have to set a schedule for that. I'm really not playing my game. So yeah, I have to do that. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna see you guys on the next one. Dr. Brute 7 signing off. Peace.